EKWB is best known for its exotic custom water cooling products, but from time to time the company does like to dip its toes into the mainstream cooling market. Recently, EK has added to its closed loop all-in-one liquid series with a new EK Nucleus line. And in today's video, we have the new EK Nucleus AIO CR360 Lux DRGB. So let's take a look and see how this new EK AIO stacks up against the competition when we put it through its paces on our test bench. Okay, let's dive straight into this review and start the basics. So the EK Nucleus AO CR360 Lux DRGB, which is this exact one here. This is available to purchase now from the EK web store directly, priced at just under 170 euros. And if you convert that to British pounds using the current conversion rate, it's just under 150 pounds, about 147 pounds. It's available to order from OC UK, but on OC UK it's priced at 189.95, so it might be better value if you do buy it directly from EK. It's also available in a 240 millimeter version, the uh, CR240 Lux DRGB, and there's also a Vision version as well. The 240 mil Lux version, is priced at just under 135 euros. Again, that's from the EK web shop. And the 360 millimeter vision version with an LCD display is priced around about 195 euros. The EK Nucleus series is compatible with all current desktop platforms. So that includes everything from AMD, everything from Intel, including AMD's AM5 socket and Intel LGA 1700. And it also comes with a five-year limited international warranty direct with EK. The first thing I'm gonna look at with the EK Nucleus is something I don't really pay much attention to, and that's the packaging. It has no bearing on the performance or on the review as a whole, but this time round, EK does seem to have gone the extra mile, so it is worth a quick look. So the external box is pretty typical. It's just a standard cardboard box, but inside it's been really nicely packaged. You get a little bit of a welcome pack. Inside there is the installation manual. It's a very detailed, very easy to follow installation manual. And it's in virtually every language possible. And then underneath that, you can see everything is laid out in this dense foam. Generally speaking with aero coolers in this price range, they come in just like a, like a almost a cardboard carton and everything's divided up in there in plastic bags and it's not really anything nice or pretty to look at but it usually serves a purpose. EK has gone with this dense foam, everything's cut out very precisely and it's arranged very nicely inside the box. It's almost got a German quality feel to it. Everything's perfectly in position and protected very well. To the side there's a smaller box as well and it's got a little EK logo on the top there and then you just pull it out and again, it's a nice quality cardboard box in dense foam and there is all the installation kit. And again, it's all really nicely arranged, cut out in this dense foam. Everything's perfectly positioned and easy to get to as well. You're not gonna be going through loads of plastic bags trying to find which piece you need for your installation. So I do like how this has been packaged. It does give it a quality feel right from the start, which is always nice when you buying any product. So what you get inside the box is the actual cooler, radiator, pump, CPU block, tubing. You get three EK FPT 120 mil fans. The installation kit, so in here are all the standoffs for Intel and AMD. There's a couple of little bags of screws as well for the fans. And another bag of screws for the fans. You do get a tube of thermal compounds, so a small tube for reinstallation. There's a little tool as well for installing the standoffs and then there's the thumb screws for the top of the CPU block. There's also an extension cable for the fans and inside here are all the top mounting brackets and back plates for the various desktop platforms. Other thing you get is this little welcome pack and as I said inside here is just the installation manual 
and that covers the whole installation in various languages. So let's take a look at the actual cooling hardware. The radiator is a uh, standard aluminium radiator. It's 400 millimeters long, 127 millimeters deep, and then the standard 27 millimeter thickness. It's quite a nice looking radiator. EK has added these panels on either side, these are a brushed aluminium panel and they have a really bright polished silver edge. They do give it a nice look. On the end as well, you can see that there's this extra piece that kind of raises it up and when you put the fans in place this is all in line with the fans so when the fans are fitted it does look rather sleek and everything all in line. Now the tubing is made from an ultra low evaporation rubber it has a braided sleeving on it. Tubing length is 400 millimeters. At the uh, radiator side the tubing is fixed in position but then on the CPU block side you've got these two 90 degree articulating fittings and the fittings have also got some aluminium covers as well that have the same polished edge that match the edge of the radiator. The pump unit is mounted inside an ABS molded plastic housing. The top cover is removable, that's also ABS molded plastic. It's removable and also rotatable, so depending on how you have the pump unit mounted inside your PC, you can then take the top cover off and rotate it so that the logo is facing the correct way up. There's four positions that you can mount it in. The base of the pump is a copper cold plate. The pump is PWM controlled with a duty cycle range of 20 to 100% up to 3,100 RPM. In terms of connections to the pump, there is a standard three pin five volt DRGB header and a standard four pin PWM fan connection. With the pump connected up to a DRGB header, this top cover lights up with a ring of RGB lighting. The lighting can be controlled by either motherboard software or by a standalone DRGB controller. While it's not connected up to any RGB lighting, it has a really subtle and understated look with this all black theme, but it is a uh, very nice looking product and it has a real quality feel to the build. The fans that come with the EK Nucleus CR360 are these EK F. PT fans, 120 mil versions, you obviously get three of them with it being a 360 millimeter radiator. And you can see on the fans there are proprietary connections, which is great because it keeps the wiring neat and tidy. These can be daisy chained together and then you use the extension in the box to connect them up to the motherboard. The extension converts them from proprietary connections to a standard four pin PWM fan header and a standard three pin five volt digital RGB header so they're nice and easy connect to connect up to motherboards or to standalone digital RGB controllers. The fans are PWM controlled with a speed range of 550 to 2300 RPM, maximum noise levels of 36 decibels at maximum speed and a maximum airflow rate of 72 cubic feet per minute. The current KitGuru test rig uses an AMD AM4 platform with an AMD Ryzen 9 5950X CPU. I'll run you through the installation process on this platform. It is an easy installation on both Intel and AMD platforms. I've installed the Nucleus AIO on both uh, LGA 1700 and on AMD AM4. The only difference really between the two installations is with the AM4 platform. You don't have to use a separate backplate. It uses the stock AMD backplate. To prepare the motherboard on AM4, the first thing you need to do is just screw the standoffs to the stock backplate. EK includes this tool to fully tighten the standoffs up. That's all you need to do to prepare the motherboard on AM4. Once you have the fan screwed to the radiator, all you need to do is daisy chain the fan cables together. EK includes this extension cable, so one end plugs into the proprietary connection and then on the other end you have the 3 pin 5 volt header and the 4 pin PWM fan control. So just connect the extension cable up to the end of the daisy chain. The Nucleus AO comes with various upper mounting brackets. This is the AM4 upper mounting bracket. Pop that in place on the base of the CPU block and then secure it in place using the four mounting screws. The EK Nucleus series does come with a pre-applied thermal compound coating on the copper base. It also comes with that small tube of thermal compound for reinstallations. But for testing continuity purposes, we use Arctic MX4 thermal compound. The next step is just to lower the CPU block 
in position. Place the four spring-loaded thumb screws in position and then tighten those down equally and progressively. Wiring up the cooler is very simple. The four pin PWM fan cable from the fans goes to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. The four pin PWM cable from the pump goes to the CPU option header on this Gigabyte motherboard. You can then connect together the DRGB cable from the fans to the DRGB cable to the pump housing and then find the three pin five volt DRGB header on the motherboard and connect both up to that. The final step then is to decide where you want to install the radiator in your case. The installation process overall is very quick, very simple, the manual's easy to follow, really easy for novice users. It's slightly quicker installing on a test bench than in the case because you have better access on the test bench. But either way, I'd say even for a novice user, the maximum time to install this is probably about 20 minutes. So it's a really easy installation process. Once you get the system all installed and powered on, you can start playing around with the RGB lighting effects. You have technically two RGB lighting zones, one on the fans and then one on the top of the CPU block. You do have a little EK logo as well on there that lights up in RGB lighting. As I mentioned previously, you have to connect the RGB lighting either directly to the motherboard or to a standalone RGB lighting controller. In this scenario I've connected up to the motherboard which means I have to use the Gigabyte RGB Fusion 2 software probably not the best example of RGB software but this is what we have because we're using a Gigabyte motherboard and you can see currently it's just scrolling through or color cycling so you have the two RGB lighting zones scrolling through various colors but you can also choose whatever presets you have on your motherboard software such as a static color so if you just want to use a static ek orange you can just have it set as a static color when you've got it connected to your motherboard header whatever rgb lighting presets your motherboard software uses that is what will be displayed on the cooler as you can see the lighting colors have synchronized well with the corsair vengeance rgb pro sl memory here the uh, fans are pretty bright the rgb lighting on the fans is pretty bright it's well diffused by the fan blades you can see some LED hotspots on there, but the lighting on top of the CPU block is quite dim and that is on its brightest setting, but it is a, it just gives it a, a subtle glow. It's not too in your face and it works well for me. So now the cooler's installed, we can look at the thermal performance. Just before we do that, I just wanna give you a quick reminder that over on kitguru.net, there will be a full written review page for the EK Nucleus AIO. On there will be the full specifications, the testing methodology, and the specification details of the test system. Let's begin with noise output, as this will give us a good indication of what to expect from thermal performance based on noise. With the fans running at maximum RPM, the EK Nucleus sits in the middle of our results with a maximum noise output of 54 decibels. It is a little on the loud side, but not out of the ordinary for a 360 millimeter AIO. The EK Nucleus fans are tuned to produce maximum cooling performance at the expense of noise. Due to this, the EK Nucleus CR360 Lux DRGB performs exceptionally well in our manual OC test. With the fans at maximum RPM, it beats off all the competition in this test by recording an average CPU temperature of 53 degrees C. Reducing the fan RPM to bring noise levels down to 40 decibels pushes up the average CPU temperature by 5 degrees C, but the EK Nucleus holds its top position in our database and beats off competition from other high performance coolers from Asus, Deepcool and Thermaltake, but it is very close in this one with only 1 degrees C difference between the top 6 coolers. In the PBO test the important metrics are clock speed and cooling power as a difference in CPU temperature between coolers is marginal. The Nucleus CR360 tops the charts again with an impressive 43.5 times average clock multiplier and handling 245 watts of package power. Overall it is an excellent result for the EK Nucleus. So it is looking like a really good CPU cooler this. In terms of 360 millimeter closed loop all in one coolers, thermal performance of the EK Nucleus is top class. As you saw in our results it topped the charts throughout even at the lower 40 decibel noise limit it was still able to hold on to its thermal performance. It is a little loud with the fans at maximum RPM, but if you want absolute raw thermal performance, it is able to perform 
in that regard as well. The build quality is high, which is typical of EK products. I like the little features such as these brushed aluminium panels. The rotatable top cover on the CPU block is also a nice feature to have. Things like braided sleeving, we don't talk about that too much nowadays as a premium feature, but it is nice to see as always. Installation process as well, very quick and very simple. Installing it on AMD and Intel platforms is really easy, even for a novice user shouldn't really have a struggle installing the CPU cooler. In terms of the price, it sits somewhere in the middle of 360mm AO CPU coolers. It's not as cheap as some of the coolers from Deepcool that we've got to say do perform well as well. But then again, it's not as expensive as some of the really high-end LCD coolers. So it is affordable in that sense. Um, obviously if you want an LCD cooler there is the Vision version. On a whole I'm really impressed with it and I really like it. It's one that I would definitely consider buying if I was in the market for a 360mm closed loop CPU cooler. So that's it for the EK Nucleus CR360 Lux DRGB. Let us know what you think of the cooler in the comment section. If you've enjoyed watching this video give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. If you like what we do here at KitGuru and you want to help support us, you can always head over to our store and pick up some of the merch, or you could subscribe to our Patreon. And as always, if you want to catch up on all the in-depth technical reviews, head over to the website.